Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast here on West Virginia Sports Network, WVSportsNet.com. This is Tony Lane alongside, as always, John Foster, my partner in crime here. And we're bringing you an exciting matchup tonight. This is the one Southern West Virginia has been waiting for, especially the ones in Logan County. The Battle of Logan County tonight, one of them anyway. Chapmanville made the short track down I-119 there and come over here to the island to take on the Wildcats. Earlier they played in the year, everyone expected a Logan blowout up in Chapmanville as they were without two starters and only pulled out a six-point victory in a crazy game that led to a literally a blackout in the gymnasium due to the snowstorm. But instead of a blackout, I think we're going to see pure electricity tonight. Absolutely. You know, we can, we can expect the same kind of contest, Tony. It's Logan Chapmanville, baby. It, it's only, it happens two times a year. Everybody in Logan County is going to try to get a ticket into the field house tonight because th these teams know each other. Like you said, 119 short route back and forth. Hey, there's guys at Logan that like girls in Chapmanville. Tony, there's nothing breeds rivalry like women. Logan, Chapmanville, man, we're glad to be here. It's You're going to be ready for an electric environment. I know a lot of people at home right now laughing, going, man, this guy's acting like an idiot. Let me tell you, this is one of the best sporting events that you can come to, especially when it's at the Willie Acres Arena. And you're going to have 4,000 plus here tonight, Tony. Yes, I mean, it's if they're not that, that many already in here, I mean, we saw this place back to the Wheeling Park game. But this isn't even in the comparison. We see some extra cops out here tonight. We got the security at every single exit. If there's something that goes down tonight, they're ready for it. But let's hope that ain't come to that. But either way, the atmosphere is not going to be friendly. Either either way you cut it, there's a lot of orange on one side. Right. Well, in one corner, I should say. Yeah. And they were putting up a pretty good cheer as the both teams entered. And then Logan, the other three quarters away, a lot of blue and gold hanging around here. Yeah. And there's just, I mean, you can just cut the tension with the knife. Yeah, it's exciting. You, you talked about a blackout. Hey, uh, the whole thing changes when the light show starts. When they hit the lights in the, in the uh, Willie Acres Arena, it's a whole other atmosphere. We'll see if that startles Chapmanville at all, Tony, out of the gate, as it has some of these other teams that's come in, Willing Park, Preston, both slow starts. Yeah, that's a very good point. Even that Northland, Ohio team, 24th in the nation, they came out with a four-point deficit after the first quarter. That uh, doesn't help uh, helped by the awesome end of the quarter shot by Keaton Johnson. Yeah. Definitely our first buzzer beater of uh, long distance proportions, right. I guess you could say. Congratulations to him on probably the long shot of the year. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, back to this game here, we got just an absolute, it's going to be a, either way, it's a rivalry. I don't expect a blowout here. No. I mean, there's just the energy alone is just going to be, just going to be keeping Chapmanville in it or Logan in it. That's right. I don't want to try to jump to any assumptions. In a rivalry like this, you don't know who's coming to play. No. I mean, Chapville's got that bitter taste in their mouth. They're like, hey, they beat us on our home floor. Right. We're coming down here. We're going to suck in them out on your place. Yeah, I mean, you know, Logan jumped back up to Triple A, so this is the last time Chapville will see them, you know, in the 2010-2011 basketball season. They didn't have Harry the first time. He might be the X Factor tonight, Tony, as he returns to the bench. You know, we're glad to, you know, everything's working out for him and his wife. Our blessings are with you, Harry. You know, if you ever need us, you can call us. We'll help you. But he might be the X Factor for his team tonight, Tony, him returning back to the bench. Yeah, that's a different story when you got the mastermind of your offense, right. the guy that actually beats that offense and teaches his assistants how to, you know, it's hard to go through that third person there to teach your offense other than the guy that created it himself, and that's what Harry Kirk does. And he's been down this road a couple times before. You know, he's worn, he's bought this T-shirt a couple times, you know, and uh, he's, he knows what to do. I mean, he knows what to expect. He knows what's on the line. He knows what the atmosphere is going to be like. Some of these kids, it may be their first time playing on Logan, but this won't be Harry Kirk's first time coaching in Logan. And I, that, like you said, it, it, it be that takes for leaps and bounds because he's got more experience than Coach Hatcher does in this rivalry. That's right, but, I mean, you just said it right there, Coach Hatcher. He's got he's got a couple of the bling, Tony. That earns a little bit of respect no matter how how your persona is. I mean, hey, Harry Kirk's on a whole other level as far as when you talk to the people in southern West Virginia about basketball. His days at Hearts Creek are legendary. But, hey, no slouch across the court. Hatcher, I mean, he's been there big games or not. I mean, like I said, Tony, championships talk. You know, that's how we gauge people. you got to put Mark Hatcher at least in a foot race. It's going to be pretty close with him and Kirk. So... It's going to be an interesting one. I, I mean, this is my first Logan Chapmanville experience. I know the, the Scott Chapmanville was my first experience with that, and that was a thriller. You know, that place was wired and crazy. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like with four times that amount of people. You know, uh, they had maybe max 1,500 up there at the Hawks Nest 
Here they're probably having the max around 4,500, right. and in standing room only. I mean, people are just crawling everywhere. Yeah. They got the state police here, Tony. You know, <laughs> I, I, that's the real deal, man. They got guns. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the that's the ultimate ender right there. As, as we see three or four of them bust here from the sidelines, yeah. and it's it's wild atmosphere. And uh, for welcome all you, aboard, welcome. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you always talk about Southern West Virginia basketball. This will probably be one of the bigger crowds you'll see this it, year. It's been an eye opener for me, but uh, I've been thrilled, man. It's been an absolute honor to cover everything down here. But uh, you know, this place just going to be—it's going to be a little intense, yeah. and I just don't know. Intense is the only word that keeps coming out of my mouth. I mean, it's just the atmosphere. I mean, you can just tell when there's electricity in the air, man. There's just so much energy coming off everybody. I mean, it's just like it feels like a match could ignite this place already. And we haven't even seen the tip off. No. That girls' game got to everybody pumped. You know, uh, and it was great to see girls have a nice crowd like this right. to play in front of too. That's something they don't get to do very much. Right, and, and it was brought on right by the rivalry. You know, Tony. I mean, that's that's what sparred that. So we got some lucky fans coming up in the booth. Yeah. Um, but we'll go ahead and go over tonight's starters here real quick in tonight's game. Um, first, I want to go over the visiting Chapmanville Tigers. First, uh, they're going to be having the big man download the transfer from Tulsa. We were talking a little bit about it last night in that Scott versus Tulsa game, that Cardinal Conference. What a huge addition he would have been to the Tulsa squad this year. But instead, he uh, you know, decided to come up to Chapmanville. His family moved up there, and uh, he's going to be the big man underneath, number one. And then uh, number 20, you're going to have Cliff Hall, the other point guard. And then along with the other swing man, number 12, Joss Easterling. 11, Zach Maynard. And also, instead of Matt Cook tonight, we're going to have number 33, Brooks Cooper, to round out your starting five. But please, uh, I mean, do not forget about Pat, Matt Cook. He is still a dangerous shooter. and he's going to, That's a nice six man coming off the bench because he can let it fly from what I understand. Yeah, well, we, we saw him at, at Scott, Tony. He had pretty good success. Hey, setting a high screen, that, that's really what kept Chapmanville in that Scott ball game. Brought, brought McKenzie up, set the screen, Cook just rolled off of them all night. Brought rain on the Skyhawks. I mean, I remember, I think Tony off the top of my head, we're not real good with official stats, but I'm going to say that he had at least five three-pointers when he was in Scott. So, he's yeah. Just, he's you can a, just tell, he's just like Paul. When he gets the ball and he knows right. he's going to shoot, his feet are already playing, he's got that quick release, right. you know, and he can take over a game. I mean, just two straight threes in a row by a player can be a 6-0 spurt, and that can give anybody momentum. And with a crowd like this, it ain't going to take much to get something going. And as you can tell, the Logan Wildcats yeah. got my attention there. Uh, but uh, as they come on the court and talk about the Logan Wildcats, John, why don't you go ahead and bring us the starting lineup for the night for the Logan Wildcats. I'm, I'm going to start with that man that made that shot right there, Tony, to rub the new crowd. Number 13, Paul Williamson, your all-time leading scorer for the Logan Wildcats. He'll be wearing number 13 tonight. Number 5, he's going to be bringing the ball up the floor, same as always, Deontay Coleman. Number 24, the Big Air Canada, Trevor Andrews. He'll be anchored down low, 54, Gary Miller. Let's not forget about Stevie. Number 32, Stevie Browning loves that fadeaway around the basket. Tony, I expect him to get a lot of looks tonight. If he can capitalize, be a big night for the Wildcats. And, of course, coaching staff. We got Mark Hatcher. Mark Hatcher going up against Harry Kirk. I mean, that's a heavyweight bout in itself. And uh, again, we just want to point out, uh, uh, among, even though Dustin Woody has been cleared to play by the WVSSAC, um, he's still learning the offense here. And uh, Coach Hatcher said that he will not be uh, participating tonight. He's just not quite ready. And he don't want to put him in in the game at this kind of caliber, such yeah. as Chapmanville, with so much on the line. You know, um, that wouldn't be a good start for a young man to come in. Right. And you know, especially right off the bat, go up against his former team. Um, you know, we'll, so, but that energy's still in the air, too. That oh, could yeah. get, make a little heat get started up. Well, you can imagine, you know, Chapmanville's going to have a chip on their shoulder about that. You know, I mean, they, they went to school with that boy, and whatever he done, Tony, that's in his personal life, you know. That's but right. I mean, as far as on the basketball floor, you know, I kind of tip my hat to the coaching staff. Keep the kid out of the game. Don't let him get hurt. You know, life is more than a game. He goes up on a layup. Somebody trying to be cool or cute. You know how you were in high school, Tony. You, I was the same way. You know, somebody puts you up to something. It, it just it takes that situation out of it. You know, good call, Wildcats, board, whoever stepped in and said he couldn't play. I support you on that. I think a lot of a lot of people. I mean, that open-minded about that would you know would at least see the point there. But again, uh, that's you know. But Logan, Woody or no Woody. They're still loaded. Yeah. That's still the same starting five they've used all year. 
has the same starting five that beat a Wheeling Park squad, that right. beat a number three team in the Division Three in the state of Ohio in Chesapeake. Right. You know, in back-to-back -back fashion on buzzer beaters, we've named them the Cardiac Cats. You know, and they're real good. You know, uh, right, yeah, they're, no they're slouch. They're the best seven and six team I've ever seen. Right. But um, again, we're going to come right back here with the starting tip-off. So we're going to keep keep it locked down here on WBSportsNet.com. Logan, Chapmanville at the island. This I'm Tony Lane alongside with Jonathan Foster on WVSportsNet.com. Your sports voice of the Valley.